More than 570 people have now been killed and at least 2,700 arrested since protests in Myanmar began against the country's military regime. The junta, or junta, pick your pronunciation, seized power on February the 1st in a coup that ousted Aung San Suu Kyi's democratically elected government. Until now, most of the protests have been peaceful there, but last week a UN official warned that the risk of civil war was growing. The warning followed the bombing of some ethnic minority areas and reports of demonstrators seeking military training. Mike Thompson has this report. For several years, a ceasefire agreement had held in the Karen ethnic minority area of Kayan State, southeast Myanmar, but not anymore. The military asked bombing our Karen territory, killing more than 20 people, and nearly 20,000 people are fleeing and hiding in the jungle. Shokwe Tuin is vice chair of the Karen National Union, the political wing of the Karen National Liberation Army, one of several ethnic minority armed groups in the country who've long been battling with the government for more autonomy. Now, he says, formerly peaceful protesters from elsewhere in Myanmar are coming to his area seeking guidance on how to fight the military regime. And he worries where all this is leading. Some people, they are fine to get some training to protect themselves, but we have to control this because we are worried that our country will come to the civil war and fall apart. Many people want to come and get the training. The problem is they don't know how to protect themselves. They don't have to use the rifles. They have to, like, attack. Karen activist Hutton, which is not his real name, insists the fight back has already begun. People already started to retaliate. And if they get more training, I'm sure they can launch a bigger civil war inside the country. If there's no other uh, intervention from the international communities... Meanwhile, the military's attempts to stop the widespread protests across the country get ever more violent, but without success. We are 56 million people, and those who are in the military and supporter of the military is maybe 5 to 6 million people who want democracy. Protester Ong Zhou Mo from Yangon. We can simply say, OK, our survival matter. Others have given their life, so I think... We are going to be fighting until we die. If we lose this fight against the military gender, Burma will be a failed state. We will be another 50 years under the military dictatorship. Journalist Ong Maram U, whose articles have openly criticised the military, has spent the last two years in hiding. He says that when he returns to the streets, it will be part of an armed uprising. This is the only way that people took up arms against the military gender. Otherwise, they will be all cracked down one by one. Despite publicly torching the country's former constitution, which preserves the military's foothold in power, whatever happens in elections, the newly formed CRPH opposition parliament is like most in the country, still dedicated to restoring democracy by peaceful means. But its lead spokesman, Dr Sasa, who's now in hiding after being charged with high treason, insists it's vital that the international community takes the following steps quickly. Come together with coordinated, targeted and tougher suction against the military generals, both economically and diplomatically. And if they don't do that? Unavoidably, bloodbath will continue. So it's urgent, it's emergency. That's why we are calling on international community to act quickly before it's too late. Dr Sasa ending that report by Mike Thompson. Well, last week, 10 ethnic groups in Myanmar decided to join together to support protesters opposed to the military coup. One insurgent group, the Karen National Union, has said government airstrikes in eastern Myanmar have displaced around 12,000 civilians.
Before their agreement, the rebel groups had abided by a national ceasefire agreement with the Burmese military. Myanmar's military government has urged them to continue to respect that accord. Shaw San Lang is a journalist and human rights activist from Rakhine State in western Myanmar. I asked him for his reaction to the agreement between the ethnic rebel groups. We can see some pattern now. The minority ethnic group are coming together to fight the military court. The groups are focused for the abolition of the current 2008 constitutions, the military dictatorships, and also release or detain political personnel as not possible. In the previous situation, the military by the people by ethnic city in order to maintain their political power. But now, the most young people are united against the military cause. And many Burmese, you know, majorities of many Burmese people are changing their political objectives. You can also see that most of young people start making the statement that apologize to the ethnic people, including Rohingya people, for their silence when this were attacked by the military. But what will the agreement practically mean? Should the military be afraid? Oh, yes. This is what's never happened before. The Burmese people, they are hoping and also they are supporting the ethnic organization to establish a federal army. I feel like the military were afraid of that because as many organizations have their own arm to fight the military. But aren't you worried this agreement could intensify the fighting between rebel groups and fracture the country along the lines of what happened in Syria? It may be difficult to say, but, you know, now most young people are already joined to the ethnic organization, you know, to start training to fight against the military. It's like, you know, becoming the bigger civil war, the new civil war. If it's a new civil war, is that good or bad? In the civil war, yeah, it's maybe a lot of killings and people dying. Yeah, it's not good. Most young people have taught me we don't have other option now. Only we have to fight our resistance now. Sho Sang Lang, a journalist and human rights activist from Rakhine State in western Myanmar, on Friday at a news conference, a spokesman for the military junta, Zo Min Tun, said the protest campaign was dwindling because people wanted peace. He said Myanmar's military authorities were operating the government effectively and that health services in the country would return to normal very soon.